Hello and welcome and thank you for watching. My name is Crystal Potts. I'm the current chair of the communications committee for the business law section of the Florida Bar. And today we are continuing our Better Know a Judge series where we interview our judges for the business law section and just get to know them a little bit better. So today I have the honor of interviewing and having a conversation with Judge Geyer. Judge Geyer is the United States bankruptcy judge and she sits in the middle district of Florida. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And we'll go ahead and get started with our questions. So first question, where did you grow up? When uh, when asked where I grew up, I generally say Bennington, Vermont, um, because that is where I spent the bulk of my youth. I was actually born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and moved around a little bit before we landed uh, in Bennington. And I was in Bennington uh, until I was about 13. And, and at that point in time, my my parents split and my mom moved to Florida. And so um, so after after the 12 or 13 year old age, I was in Sarasota, Florida. OK. And so how did you like the move to Florida? It was a lot warmer. Um, <laughs> I think I've only been back to Vermont once or twice uh, since. I keep saying every year that I'm going to get back and I'm going to experience the foliage and I'm going to bring my daughter um, and it hasn't happened yet. So may maybe next year, may maybe this October. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you were a child growing up, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up or what did you think you wanted to be? Well, I wouldn't have had a real solid answer to this question, but for the fact that a couple of years ago, my mom unearthed a letter that I had written to her when I was around nine or 10. And in the letter, I informed her um, that I wanted to be either an actress or a psychologist or a lawyer. And I could understand where I might be interested in being an actress. Um, the There was a a theater group um, in the Bennington area that was very active and we had friends in the theater. So I could probably have envisioned myself doing something like that. And a very close family friend um, was a psychologist and my uh, family was generally in the social work type industry. So I could mm -hmm. see myself there, but where I came up with lawyer, I, I have no idea. I, I wouldn't have seen a lawyer on TV. I mean, back in those days, we were watching, you know, Laverne and Shirley and uh, and Happy Days. And I don't remember a lawyer character uh, on, on either of those shows. So I, I do not know where I came up with that. But apparently from the age of nine or 10, I wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. Did you have any lawyers in your family or any? No, no lawyers in our family. No lawyers who were friends of the family. No lawyers on the television shows I watched. I don't know that I had any friends who had parents who were lawyers. So mm -hmm. I really don't know where I came up with that. I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah, we're glad you did as well. <laughs> and so you um, were a bankruptcy attorney before your judgeship. So what influenced you to practice bankruptcy law? Well, it actually, um, I guess Bob Ross would call this a happy accident. Um, I signed up for uh, a class I didn't intend to sign up for, mm -hmm. and it wound up dictating the rest of my career outcome. Um, I went to University of Florida for law school, and a group of my friends and I had decided we would take a course called Remedies. Um, so that was the course we were all going to try to sign up for and get together. Uh, and I was looking through the, you know, back then they had a printed syllabus and I was paging through it. And I came across a course called Creditors, Remedies and Bankruptcy. And I thought that my friends were abbreviating the course name. Of course, there is a separate course called Remedies, but at the time mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. I just thought that they were abbreviating Creditors, Remedies and Bankruptcy to Remedies. Uh -huh. And so I signed up for the class and after the class, you know, I, I got with my friends and I said, you know, none of you were in the class. What happened? And they're like, well, no, you weren't in the class. 
And I had Professor Jeff Davis, who, if anyone watching has um, had a, a class um, with Professor Davis will know he is an entertaining and char charismatic fellow. And uh, I just fell in love with the subject. Um, and so that's how it started. Oh, that is a very interesting story. <laughs> I, I actually, um, and then to further the story, uh, Judge Jenneman, um, Judge Karen Jenneman came to teach a class uh, at Professor Davis's advanced bankruptcy class. Mm -hmm. And I just thought she was the nicest woman and just very approachable. And uh, and so I wound up getting to know her and subsequently um, being selected to do an externship in her chambers. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, wound up becoming her law clerk for uh, two years. And then I went out into private practice and then I came back uh, and I was her law clerk for another six years. Okay. And so I'm curious with you, um, joining the bankruptcy remedies class and then your friends were in the remedies class did your excitement about your class influence them to then take that class in the future sometime before they graduated uh i don't think so no. <laughs> because none of them <laughs> None of them today are practicing bankruptcy attorneys. I'm the only one out of that little friend group. <laughs> okay. And so how would you summarize your career as a bankruptcy attorney? So I, when I graduated from law school, um, I, I did, uh, I, you know, I, I worked with Judge Gentleman as her law clerk. Um, and then I had a, a friend, uh, who, someone who is now a friend, his name is Doug Neway, uh, and he is the Chapter 13 trustee for the Jacksonville Division, but he ran a consumer practice in Orlando. And I thought, for sure, um, when I move on from chambers and do something other than, you know, serve as a law clerk, I'll wind up being a consumer debtor lawyer. That was, I was pretty sure that was the way it was going to go for me. Um, I was wrong. I wound up going to a, a, a big law firm, Baker and Hostetler, where I did uh, pretty much exclusively commercial uh, debtor work. So mm -hmm. I did bankruptcy reorganization cases representing the debtor uh, in Orlando, often representing you know, um, hospitality industry clients, hotels. Um, and then I, I represent, I think I've actually represented every possible type of client in a bankruptcy case, except uh, an institutional lender. So I've never represented a bank, but I have represented chapter 11 trustees and examiner. Um, I have done occasional um, consumer debtor work, but it would have been high, high net worth, or I guess it would be more accurate to say formerly high net worth um, um, individual chapter seven cases, but primarily chapter 11 work. And so during your bankruptcy career, did you have a, a favorite type of case, a case that excited you the most out of all of the different areas? I always loved chapter 11 work, um, but I, uh, and I found, you know, it's interesting. Um, I interviewed for a position that I, that I did not get uh, with the United States trustees office. And perhaps it was my answer to this question that did it. I was asked what uh, type of case do you find the hardest, chapter 11s or chapter 7? And I said, chapter 13. <laughs> um, so so that has been, chapter 13 has been a challenge for me. Um, I was fortunate um, while I did my uh, externship with Judge Gentleman, uh, that was a four four week program. I also did a four week externship with Lori Weatherford, who is our standing chapter 13 trustee in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard for me to uh, to pick a favorite type of case. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up to speed very quickly on the chapter 13 cases. Um, I can't pick one type of case over another. I love them all. It's like, you know, picking a favorite child. Okay. <laughs> And so before you became a bankruptcy judge, who or what inspired you to go that route? Oh, well, that's the easy question. That would be uh, Judge Gentleman. Judge Gentleman served as an example and as a role model, but I don't think I ever would have thought that I could do what she does. 
it never, it didn't occur to me during my clerkship that I would ever uh, apply to be a bankruptcy judge. I, I was so impressed by her that I would never have put myself in that category. Mm -hmm. It was actually my father who said, you know, I think you'd be a good bankruptcy judge. I think this is something you should consider doing. Um, I love to write. Uh, I uh, am passionate about bankruptcy law as all of our bankruptcy practitioners are. Um, and I often can see through a case to the end or where I think it should probably wind up. And mm -hmm. hopefully that is an attribute that I bring to the bench now. Um, but certainly Judge Gentleman um, was inspirational to me, as was Judge Briskman. Um, they worked uh, very closely together. He was a bankruptcy judge in Orlando for the entire time that I served as Judge Gentleman's law clerk. And I occasionally got to work on a project or two with him. Um, so those would be my my closest inspirations. But Really, I, I, it, it didn't occur to me until far into my time at private practice that I would ever consider even applying to be a bankruptcy judge. Okay. And what challenges, if any, have you had in transitioning from private practice to the bench? Losing my name. <laughs> nobody, nobody calls me Tiff anymore. <laughs> So I, uh, yeah, I hadn't, there are a few things that I had not anticipated. Um, and one was how, uh, you know, I, I've always held bankruptcy judges and, you know, all judges in such an esteem. And mm -hmm. I was always just Tiff, you know, mm -hmm. Tiff or Tiffany, or I, um, when I first started at um, Baker Hostetler, there was a singer, um, a rapper named T-Pain. Mm -hmm. And my uh, my name before it was Tiffany Payne Geyer was just Tiffany Payne. And when I started at Baker, several of the associates said, oh, you're T-Pain, that's so cool. We're gonna call you T-Pain. I had no idea who T-Pain was. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, "I that's great. Okay, T-Pain. And they're <laughs> like, do you not know On a Boat? Have you not heard the song On a Boat? And so then I came up to speed um, and I understand that I had been, I had a pet name as a very cool rapper. Um, <laughs> so, so it had been T-Pain for 12 years at Baker Hostetler. And now I don't really have a name anymore um, at all. It's just, it's just judge or, or often people just don't call me anything because it's so strange for them to go from calling me Tiff or Tiffany or T-Pain to judge. Uh, so that's been a challenge. And it's also been a challenge when I, uh, sitting on the bench when I confirmed my first chapter 11 case, that was my wheelhouse in private practice. That was, mm -hmm. that's why we did what we do was to confirm a case. And after confirmation, you know, you'd get together either with your client or with opposing counsel, you know, if you had a consensual case and people were still friendly, which by and large they, they are, uh, and we'd get together and we'd go to lunch or we'd go for drinks and, I had a case confirmed in my courtroom and I wasn't going to be a part of any of that. Yeah. <laughs> I was not going to the party. Um, so, you know, that kind of separation was, uh, I hadn't really anticipated that it would be uh, as difficult as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can only imagine. I had um, one of the other judges that I interviewed touch on that a bit as well. Um, but we're happy to see you at the BLS uh, meetings and, um, just am happy to have you with us. And I know your investiture is coming up. So we're excited about that as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited too. So what is one piece of advice you have for attorneys who may someday practice before you? Well, this is something I don't need to say because anyone who's watching this um, video interview will already know this because it's just the way we operate in the middle district of florida and that is be good to one another um treat each other with the courtesy and respect that you in turn would hope to uh to receive um this is just not something i ever have to worry about here uh in orlando or in the middle district everybody is extremely civil um i did not always unfortunately find that to be the case when i was practicing out of florida um, and out of uh, the middle district of florida but i'm very lucky to have uh such great lawyers here and such you know a, a civil 
civil level of practice. Um, the only other advice I would have is that um, candor goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, a lawyer is tasked with um, you know, zealous representation of their client's interest, but it does it does help um, when uh, counsel identifies possibly a weakness in their case and just owns it up front, um, and then explains why that factor is not terribly relevant and focuses on the other factors. Um, so, civility and candor. Okay. So let's move on to our rapid fire questions. Okay. What is your favorite bankruptcy code provision or section? So that's another hard one. That's like picking a favorite child. How could I possibly choose one section of Title 11 over any other section of Title 11? So I'm going to dodge the question. Okay. And I'm going to go with <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, uh, a section of of Title 28, um, 1334. So when you take that and you combine it with the district court's order of reference, I'd say that's one of my favorites. Okay. <laughs> What's the last book you read? The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. No, that's not true. Um, um, Circling the Sun by Paula McLean. So two Paula McLean books, and then uh, and they were both great. And then before that, I read All the Light You Ca All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, which was beautiful. Okay. How do you like to spend your time off the bench? So my husband would say I enjoy spending my time off the bench starting but never finishing various arts and crafts project projects and then just leaving the remnants of the projects all over the house. So that that might be how he would answer that question. Um, how I would answer that question would be um, cooking. Uh, I love to cook. I, I can't, I'm not, you know, far from any kind of a gourmet cook, but I think I'm a pretty solid cook. Um, I have a brother who is a chef, um, mm. so I'm not nearly at his level, but I do enjoy cooking um, and scuba diving. Uh, oh, I got okay. I got certified to scuba dive when my, so I guess it would be about eight or nine years ago when my daughter was 12. She and I got uh, certified to scuba dive together and um, we uh we caught the scuba bug from my husband. Um, he was an avid scuba diver and was delighted to see we took an interest. Um, and so we we uh, try to be underwater as often as possible. Okay, so two follow-up questions. What's mm -hmm. your favorite thing to cook? Hmm. Well, I I go with your basics. I don't have a, I like to cook lamb and my friends like the way I prepare lamb. My husband does not care for the way I prepare lamb, mm -hmm. but I like your basics. I like chicken, uh, steak, pork, fish. I don't think I have a favorite. Um, it's any recipe. I, I don't really follow a recipe. I may, I may look at a recipe or look at a picture of food and think, oh, I want to prepare that tonight for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just kind of throw it together. So mm -hmm. make a lot of pasta with okay. the ingredients I've just mentioned, but okay. um, you don't, don't have one particular favorite. Okay. And then since you enjoy scuba, scuba diving, what's the best or most memorable place that you have scuba dive? Um, I have not had time to go far, far out of the country, like to Indonesia or anything like that. It's a bucket list thing, but my favorite scuba diving trip had to be in Cozumel where the currents were just ripping. They were so fast. Um, and so we were just flying by um, various species of eel. Um, I believe that was the trip I saw five seahorse. 
five seahorses are are and they're hard to spot um and i never would have spotted them on my own but this was in a if you're if you're in a high current you're never going to spot something like a, a, a seahorse so this must have been on one of the days there where we were in a low current situation because our dive instructor it was as if he had them in his pocket and he planted them our, our dive lot our dive lead i should say because we saw five mm -hmm. um and it was fantastic but uh, th that was that was a really great saw shark um, uh, schools of fish. I got caught up in a huge school. That's my favorite part about being underwater is mm -hmm. actually pretending that um, I am one among them uh, and they don't seem to mind or notice. They never yeah. let me know that I'm any different from them. They're polite about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's nice to swim in a school of fish. It occurred to me the other day that that probably um that might not be the brightest thing that could just make me potential bait. Um, you know, a shark might see that as a bait ball, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it hasn't deterred me yet. <laughs> okay. And so what bad or trashy TV show will you admit to watching? Hmm. <laughs> Can I guess? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Okay. <laughs> What's the first concert you attended? So I was um, in my mid to young teens, and it was either the Beastie Boys or Aerosmith. I don't remember which one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Who is your favorite musician or musical group? So I have many. Uh, musicians and musical groups that I love, but I have to say my solid, and this has been true since I was about 13, is Jim Morrison and the Doors. The Doors is my all-time favorite band. And two more questions. What are your favorite movies? Okay, so my favorite movies... I have to say Tombstone, and I think I have every word of the movie memorized. I've seen it at least 20 times. Um, the same would be true of The Departed. Uh, love that one. Uh, Goodwill Hunting. Mm -hmm. I can quote most of those movies uh, in my sleep. Um, there's sort of a different movie genre is, uh, another one of my all time favorites. This, I, I must've imprinted on this movie as a, as a child, but the sound of music, oh, um, and that. to my family's horror, uh, mm -hmm. I will often just break out into songs <laughs> from the sound of music. Uh, I won't do that here with okay. you today, or, or really ever outside of, of the comfort of, and the privacy of my oh, own man. Home. Okay. Uh, thank me now. <laughs> And last question, what book would you recommend everyone read in their lifetime? So uh, when I was clerking for Judge Gentleman, um, Judge Gentleman gave me a book uh, called Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. And she didn't just give me that book, actually. She um, bought a copy for all of her law clerks who had served in her chambers to date and wrote all of us a lovely letter and um, gave us a copy of the book. And I won't say much about the book um, other than that it is a must read, but it was a memoir about a series of visits the author, Mitch Album, had made with a former professor of his who had taken ill. Uh, and it was just an incredibly special book and a reminder from Judge Gentleman to us as we all um, left the the chamber's nest to try to remember to take time for the important things in life while you're out there in private practice and so, so, so busy. Um, so that was her reminder to us. And so I would recommend that book to anyone. Perfect. So those are all the questions that I have. I want to thank you again for taking the time to join us. And do you have anything else to add? No, I don't. I hope to see many of you at my investiture coming up on St. Patrick's Day. Um, I'm hoping to still be able to fit into a green suit that my mother bought me um, pre-pandemic. Um, if I'm not 
wearing that suit on that day, it's because it didn't fit anymore. <laughs> so I, but I, I welcome and encourage everyone to wear green. Um, and I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible then. And thank you so much for your time, Crystal. You're very welcome. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks very much. You too.